Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. When it comes to gaming companies creating crossovers that allow various characters from their universes to fight it out, Smash Brothers is the obvious franchise that comes to mind. However, it would also probably come as no surprise to you that Nintendo were not the first people to do this. For example, years before Nintendo brought such a formula to the table, Sega had already done it first. After all, Sega does what Nintendo don't, or at least before them in many cases. In today's video we are going to take a deep dive look at the ridiculous crossover fighting game that saw characters from multiple different Sega franchises face off to decide once and for all who was the true king of fighters on the Sega Saturn. This 3D polygon based fighter allows players to choose from an eclectic lineup of tantalising combatants which allows us to play as memorable characters which vary from Akira from Virtual Fighter to the bloody Hornet car from Daytona USA. This was a freaking imaginative game. So, without further ado, this ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of Fighters Megamix, the ridiculous game where you can even fight as a car. Yeah. Many years before Nintendo had established their Smash Bros franchise and created the worst and most immature fan base in all of gaming, crossover games were known for more than just fans smelling bad, online lynch mob campaigns, and dozens of allegations of inappropriate behaviour towards minors. In an era before the Smash Bros community had tarnished the crossover medium, there were great crossover games with squeaky clean reputations. Debatably, the first ever crossover fighting game would arrive in 1993, with the release of SNK's Fatal Fury Special. Basically, in this game, if the player met a certain set of requirements in a playthrough, they could face off against Ryo, a playable fighter from Art of Fighting. This feature in the game was well received, so just one year later, in 1994, SNK would release The King of Fighters. The game featuring the crossover narrative as its main selling point, offering a large roster of playable characters who gamers could take control of in 3 vs 3 encounters. The game with its huge for its time roster featured fighters from Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, Ikari Warriors and Psycho Soldier. The game was incredibly well received and was certainly, by this point at least, the most ambitious crossover in gaming history. The success of King of Fighters would help pave the way for more crossover fighting games in the genre. So by 1996, we had two more King of Fighters games, X-Men vs Street Fighter, and of course the subject of today's video, Fighters Megamix. Sega's crossover fighter, just like King of Fighters before it, would present players with a mixed roster from two different fighting games with a sprinkling of characters from other franchises too, and a dash of new characters exclusively made for this game. The Sega Saturn game was developed by Sega AM2 Research and Development Division. The team was founded by the legendary Yu Suzuki, who had previously developed smash hits such as Hang On and Outrun, and would obviously later go on to create one of the most ambitious efforts ever made in gaming, the Shenmue titles. After some early arcade successes, the first game he created, leading his new AM2 team, was Virtual Racing in 1992, the impressive polygon based racing game that he would follow up alongside Sichi Ishii with Virtual Fighter the following year. The game, like many Sega titles, was revolutionary in its day, presenting the first fighting game ever to feature realistic 3D polygon human characters. After the release of this game, Sichi Ishii would part with Sega to go off and work for Namco, where he would create Tekken, another legendary franchise from the genre, but Yu Suzuki was obviously not done at Sega yet. Next, Suzuki and his team would create Virtual Fighter 2, a game that offered an expanded roster, but more importantly huge graphical improvements for a game that came out just one short year after the original. So with this game under the company's belt, Sega once again had at their disposal graphically arguably the most technically impressive fighter around. In the following year of 1995, Yu Suzuki's AM2 would create yet another Sega fighting game franchise, this one known as Fighting Vipers. Fighting Vipers would take advantage of the same game engine as Virtual Fighter 2, but instead would feature enclosed arenas and an armor mechanic. The game's primary purpose was that it was specifically designed to target a US audience, as, whilst the Virtual Fighter games are amongst the most popular ever released in Japan, 
they never had the same level of tectonic impact outside of their homeland, which is why Sega would create something new. To help appeal to this different niche, the whole game takes place in just the USA, and fighters use more freeform styles of martial arts instead. Although the Sega Saturn was never particularly popular stateside, you could make a case that this game achieved its goal as fighting vipers sold well on the system. So now with two major 3D polygon fighting game franchises under their belt, you all know what happens next. Late 1996 would see the release of Fighters Megamix, a game that would heavily feature a cast of fighters from both Fighting Vipers and the Virtual Fighter franchise. Apart from just combining rosters from different properties, Fighters Megamix would take further influence from the King of Fighters, by the inclusion of mixing styles from two different franchises together as well as just characters. For example, closed war arena stages are included like in Fighting Vipers, along with open-ended rings like in Virtual Fighter, although you can't knock them out of the ring this time around. Despite the fact that Fighters Megamix was developed for the Sega Saturn and features roster members from Fighting Vipers and Virtual Fighter 2, surprisingly the game shares many mechanics with Virtual Fighter 3, a game that was available by that point in the arcades and intended to be ported to the Saturn, but ultimately cancelled for the system. Due to the Virtual Fighter 3 mechanics, Fighters Megamix features many Virtual Fighter 2 characters with their updated, newer Virtual Fighter 3 movesets. The game also marks the first Saturn title to feature the Dodge move, another mechanic created for Virtual Fighter 3 that was integrated into this title. Apart from the common elements shared with Virtual Fighter 3, players have the opportunity to switch between two distinct playstyles, which are of course Fighting Vipers or Virtual Fighter. This feature determines the match type two fighters must face off against each other in, basically the ground rules for a contest. When playing using the Fighting Vipers play mode, it allows fighters to knock each other back further distances, and to take advantage of air recovery. The Virtual Fighter style on the other hand features higher float heights, remaining more faithful to the fighting found in that franchise. Further from this, whichever play mode you opt for, fighters from each franchise have further features that differentiate them, such as Fighting Vipers characters come equipped with body armour so they can take less damage until the armour is destroyed, and Virtual Fighters have the additional attribute of having particular moves that are effective in destroying the Vipers armour to help create a more balanced experience I guess. The game features many other play modes one would expect from a fighting game which vary from a two-player versus mode, team battles and a standard survivor mode. However, the most intriguing of all is what the game refers to as one-player mode, which varies greatly from an arcade mode which we get with most games of this type. When selecting this play mode, after selecting a fighter, players are then presented with four courses labelled A to D to choose from. These courses indicate which series of fighters a player must defeat so they must defeat six characters in a row followed up with a seventh fighter who is a secret unlockable character. Speaking of the characters, we shall talk more about them along with all the unlockables in this game very shortly. But first, let's dust off this game's play modes and mechanics. Like in most fighting games, contests are won in this one when a player wins two out of three rounds. In terms of the courses players must complete, we have a Novice Trial, which is suitable for beginners, a Virtual Fighter course, where all characters are plucked from Virtual Fighter, a Fighting Vipers course, which obviously contains Vipers characters, and finally a Girls course, which contains only female opponents. When all four of these courses have been beaten, another three courses are unlocked, including a Muscle course against physically strong opponents, a Smart Guy course against tactical fighters, and a Dirty Fighters course against sneaky fighters, like me. Once all of these courses have been beaten, a bosses course is also unlocked. Then last but not least, a bonus course contains bonus characters from the game to take down too. All in all, with this mode's vast array of unlockables and different courses, I can safely say that Fighters Megamix certainly offers a single player experience with arguably more replay value than most fighting games since this one certainly offers a lot more than a simple arcade mode. Now, I guess with a crossover fighting game, or any fighter for that matter, it is extremely important to talk about the game's roster, and as you can probably gather, Fighters Megamix offers a mega mix of interesting fighters to choose from. The game initially presents players with a default lineup of fighters from Virtual Fighter 2 and Fighting Vipers. As mentioned previously in this video, we have 11 fighters representing each side, 
so everyone will have their favourites here. My particular favourite being Kuma-chan from Fighting Vipers, a simply amazing bear mascot in a hat who has zero points of articulation. A bit like a Watch Mojo host, I guess. Either way, an amazingly creative fighter. Now, to me though, it is the unlockable characters who feature as some of the most interesting and ridiculous characters in this whole game. And one of the main reasons why people still bring this game up quite a bit, even now. The first unlockable fighters we shall touch on come from Sonic of the Fighters of all games. AM2's arcade exclusive fighting game that featured roster members from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. But rather than including the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog into the Mega Mix, Sega boldly chose to promote Sonic the Fighters less well-known character than this crossover. Instead, we got Bart the Polar Bear, the scarf, beanie hat and mitten wearing heavyweight, and Bean the Dynamite, a green duck who wears a neckerchief and Sonic's famous shoes. This character, who is clearly based on the main character from the old Sega arcade game Dynamite Ducks, alongside Bart the Polar Bear, would appear in this game roughly the same size as humans. Another interesting factoid is these bold picks would appear as illusions in Sonic Mania many years later, so Sega still have not forgotten these obscure characters. Next up we have Deku, an original character created for this game. This fighter is a green bean, but in a hat. To unlock this Mexican character, the dirty fighter's course must be completed. Thinking about it, this is not the first time I've seen a Mexican character made exclusive for a crossover fighting game. Marvel vs Capcom 2 has a Mingo, so maybe these Japanese companies felt they needed more fighters to appeal to Latin American markets. Who knows, either way we can all agree that a Mingo and Deku are ridiculous. We then have Janet Marshall, plucked straight out of Virtual Cop 2, another popular Sega title released in a similar time frame. Janet can use her gun in combat, shooting unblockable bullets that result in devastating damage upon her targets. Using the gun three times in quick succession will force Janet to reload though, accompanied by the reload voice clip from Virtual Cop 2, which is a fantastic nod and reference to the character's previous success. The game also contains as unlockables characters known as Kids Zakira and Kids Sarah from the game Virtual Fighter Kids. Virtual Fighter Kids was basically a chibi version of Virtual Fighter 2. A bizarre trend in Japan where they would re-release fighting games but for some reason decided to try and make the game's intimidating fighters look cute instead. I have to say some aspects of Japanese culture still baffle me as the existence of this game comes across as pointless and nonsensical. In fact I am going to explore this phenomenon further when we look at Pocket Fighter in a future episode as this is a depthy topic for another time. So stay tuned for that upload. We also have Render Hero from the Japanese game simply known as a uh, Render Hero. This action role playing game star received his combat armour by accident during his parents housewoman party when he ordered pizza from Sensational Cafeteria and instead received the suit. After realising the suit gave him incredible strength and that he is required to pay for the armour, Taro decides to become a hero for hire performing various heroic tasks and odd jobs for the townspeople of Kulja. Render Hero obviously makes his fighting game debut on this occasion. The game also features Siba, a character we touched on last year in my Virtual Fighter video. Siba is a character who was cut from the game but still included on cabinet artwork. Baffling players everywhere. This Arab fighter uses his sword in combat. An improved version of the Fighting Vipers character Barn is also included in this one known as you are a barn but the other unlockable fighters we are yet to discuss is where things begin to get really really ridiculous of course whether you have played this game or not you may be familiar with the fact that this game lets players play as the hornet from daytona usa hilariously this vehicle stands on its back wheels and boxes using its front wheels it plays like a fighting vipers character in that parts of its armour can be knocked off revealing its vulnerable engine, proving that the lunatics who made this game put in some fault here. To stay faithful to Daytona, the car even makes engine noises and tyre screeching sound effects too. Now remember that palm tree which functions as part of the AM2 logo? Well, this game allows players to live out their fantasies of getting to play as this very logo. 
Players can unlock this wonderful character by racking up 84 hours of playtime with this experience, then selecting Kuma-chan with the Z button. Whilst both this character and the unlocking method sounds like playground lies, thankfully AM2 Palm Tree is the real deal, and I can't wait to see him in Smash Bros one day. Last but certainly not least we have Mr. Meat, the most nonsensical character in the whole game. Mr. Meat is just that, a piece of meat who can fight. Why they added this character to the lineup, can't really say. But if you want to add him to your lineup, he can be gained simply by booting up the game 30 times, then placing the cursor on Kuma-chan and pressing X and opting to play Course I. Nice. As one would expect, this wacky game with its large, even sometimes questionable roster selection would draw its fair amount of intrigue on release. Journalists of the era tended to favour this quirky game's quality. Game Informer, for example, gave it a 9.25 out of 10, adoring the game's roster and varied movesets. In fact, they would give it the highest score they had ever awarded to a Saturn title. Sega Saturn magazine would state it is different enough to Virtual Fighter 2, and indeed Virtual Fighter 3, to warrant immediate purchase. The fact that it has a huge depth and gargantuan levels of playability helps too. GameSpot summarised, if you don't own a Saturn and have even a passing interest in the Virtual Fighter series, this is probably the game you could use to justify purchasing the system. GameSpot would further add that matching up brawlers from Fighting Vipers and Virtual Fighter 2 is inspired thinking, and though Megamix isn't perfect, it's close to it. Next Generation would also lavish the game with praise, confirming, simply put, this is the best fighting game ever on a system that's already chock full of great fighting games. Commercially, Fighters Megamix would go on to become one of the most popular games on the entire Saturn platform, and the game with its crazy roster and staggering amount of content is still appreciated by some gamers today too. One more interesting fact we have to mention though, which we have yet to cover in this video, is whilst the Saturn version is the most easily recognisable version of this game, interestingly the game was available on another system, with that being the Tiger Gamecom. Like every Gamecom game, Fighters Megamix on the hardware is truly dreadful, so hopefully no one will ever want to see a handheld around the world episode focused on that game. In regards to the Sega Saturn version though, as much as the game is appreciated, I feel that it perhaps deserves even a little more appreciation today, as like most classics available on the hardware, it goes somewhat slightly under the radar due to the Saturn's overall poor sales in the West. Like, I would say there is way more reason I would want to revisit this game than Smash Bros for the Nintendo 64. It offers way more content and options. It is certainly one of the most unique crossover fighting games of all time, and who would not want to play the Daytona car, the AM2 tree, or the glorious Mr. Meat? This is an underrated classic. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of Fighters Megamix, the ridiculous fighting game where you get to play as a car. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have much experience with this game and what you think of it, or if this video has inspired you to want to try this one out for yourself. If you are new here and you like fighting game content, I have been uploading new videos covering different games in the genre weekly for over a year. So if you want to see more, make sure you like, subscribe and ring that notification bell to never miss a video. Today's subject was chosen by the people who back this channel on Patreon, who take part in democratic polls regularly to choose the content I make. If you want to vote, join my Discord, gain early access to all of my content and get your name in the producer credits in these videos, then you may want to consider checking out my Patreon page. Special thank yous go out to Sebastian Velez, Carl Johnson, The Murder of Crows, Heo Paulo Lopez, Joseph Rasmick, Doug Perkins, Lou Johnson, BXL Gotham, Rowan Dinch, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Cambo Rumble 82, Azra Warakai, Keith Ferguson, Drop Quinn Morella, Prince Knight, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, TOG Driver, Angel Light 85, Alethia Swanson, Timothy W. Haskins II, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Carlos Domingos, Glennie Glenn, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Sponge Matt B, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Aaron McNamara, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Post DXL, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Ron Studd, Isabel End, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Stephen Lewis, Sarah Powell, Blaine McRenee, Sarai, H. Al Sarai, Marino Liga, Chris Cole, Adrian Hannington, 
Bernard NG, Richard Stu, Stuart, James McDonald, Crazy Yell, Dan Van Dammit, Adam Casting, Gregory Smoradiewicz, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bell, Chris Fisk, Paul Elliott, Me Machine Dean, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Hans Christian, Craig Jenkins, Tom Elliott, Retroversing.com, KC Wright, Synth Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, and all of my other patrons. Thank you so much for helping the wheels to continue to turn on this channel. Yeah. Cheerio.